not posted. Okay, so welcome again to lesson one with biochemistry basics. Uh, I, I was talking about the idea that those organic molecules that are composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, specifically things like glucose, which we will be focusing quite a bit on in this class, uh, those organic compounds are super important for the biological makeups of all living organisms. Uh, so you learned this in grade 10, and so hopefully you remember some of this stuff. And if you took grade 11 chemistry, you will be quite privy to the understandings of the basic atomic structure, including the term valence. Uh, those valence electrons are going to affect the atom's ability to bond and make connections overall. Uh, and that reactivity is what we're referring to here. How reactive an atom is will have a huge impact on how it behaves. Uh, so understanding how those reactivities or those valence electrons behave in those organic molecules or those organic atoms are going to be quite important for us to generally make our connections to understanding how those they work in all of biology. Uh, so the number of valence electrons for each of those atoms is as follows, and those are their Lewis structure diagrams. So again, when you take note and when you take a look at the, each of those organic molecules, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, you'll see the valence electrons, if you recall anything from grade 10 slash grade 11 chemistry, uh, hydrogen is going to be super reactive. Carbon could go either way. Oxygen is going to really be uh, reactive in terms of taking electrons. And nitrogen somewhere along the lines of, of the middle path, so to speak. So when we talk about electronegativity, when we talk about reactivity, uh, just remember the valence electrons and, and how that kind of works with the aspect of reactivity. So carbon is, is quite important and quite special. Uh, it is the basic backbone of all life, all biological molecules, and many more things even, uh, not just life itself. So the key thing you have to understand is that its ability uh, to bond with four things or four times is very important in, in biology, but as well as other fields of science, physics and chemistry. So recall that electrons are found in the orbitals around the nucleus of an atom. Those orbitals contain those valence electrons and electrons as a whole. And how they are located will help impact how it behaves. So the general location of atoms, or of electrons, sorry, in an atom, uh, give its distinct 3D shape and will affect the way that those molecules form shapes. So the sh shape of molecules will be affecting the function. And this is going to be a common theme that we spend a lot of time talking about throughout this entire course, the shape of molecules impacting the shape and function of the structures that it makes. So it will be something that I bring up quite often when referring to protein structure, enzyme structure, and uh, the like. So we have ions, which are charged particles. We have isotopes, which have more or less neutrons. Uh, than any other, another form of that same element. Uh, this should just be reviewed from grade 10 science, so I won't spend too much time on it, but you will uh, have to have a general understanding of how they work. And then the number of protons will never change. Each element has a unique atomic number, which will represent the number of protons, and that's going to stay consistent. And then the number of protons is going to be uh, equal to the number of electrons in most cases, uh, but again, the hydrogen ion and any ion will be an exception to that. As that atom gains or loses electrons, its proton and electron number will vary. Okay, so when we look at chemical bonds between atoms, and this is the last page of the note for those of you following along, so I'll open up the floor to questions afterwards. Uh, the chemical bonds between atoms, they come in many different forms. The two forms that we're going to be looking for is the ionic bond, as well as the covalent bond. So in ionic bonds, it forms between what's called a cation and an anion, a positively charged and a negatively charged ion. They create ions. Uh, the creation of ions involves gains or losses of those electrons. Metal is going to lose electrons. Non-metals will gain electrons. And Lewis dot diagrams uh, will look something to this accord with regards to sodium chloride. Uh, these ions in these compounds are strongly attracted to each other, uh, but they're also very uh, attracted to water molecules, and it forces them to disassociate and break up in water. These ionic, bo uh, ionic bonds are very, very strong forces of attraction, and they're super difficult to break via melting, but with water as a source of, uh, as a solvent, it will help with that disassociation. So that's an important key feature for biology because we're going to talk a lot about how different ionic structures 
dissolve in water and how they behave in that fluid as a result. So with covalent bonds, we're looking at non-metals, and it's going to be through a sharing of electrons. Uh, again, the Lewis dot diagrams that we're going to look at for this uh, will look something like that. They are going to look at the unpaired valence electrons, and they're going to work at sharing those unpaired valence and ele electrons in an attempt to try to make it as stable as possible. Uh, the key thing here being that it's non-metals, and as a result of it being non-metals and the electrons being shared, it leads to something called polarity. Uh, so those of you who took grade 11 chemistry should uh, recall what polarity is. This polarity can be classified, uh, or any molecule that's covalent can be classified as polar or nonpolar. And it's based in that difference of what I referred to earlier, electronegativity. That electronegativity, I'll, I'll spend a bit of time talking about in the lessons today. Uh, but it's looking at also the shape of the molecule that kind of helps determine the polarity. This is going to be very important for uh, our class as a whole because we're looking at how different molecules, both ionic and covalent, interact with each other. And, and the polarity will have a huge impact on how that reaction or how that interaction will take place. So when you look at that water molecule, which is kind of has that bent structure, it's going to have that polar charge as a result of the structure as well as the electronegativity. Same thing with methanol. Uh, those nonpolar molecules, which tend to be more linear and equally balanced, such as carbon dioxide and oxygen, those different polar nonpolar molecules, they interact with each other differently. They interact with other things differently. And that's going to kind of give us the, the underpinning understanding that we're going to need to, to utilize for a lot of the content in this class. So electronegativity is the last thing that I want to spend time talking about. Um, Ultimately, what we are talking about is that it's the measure of an atom's ability to attract shared electrons. So whatever I mean in terms of electronegativity, uh, with regards to polar covalent bonds, the electrons are shared quite unequally as a result of the, uh, the difference in electronegativity charges. So one atom will attract electrons more strongly than other, resulting in a partial charge across the entire molecule. And so that's what I'm talking about with those polar covalent bonds. On average, they'll have a delta electronegativity or a difference of electronegativity between 0.5 and 2. So those ionic bonds that are going to start to form as a result of that. Nonpolar covalent bonds are where electrons are shared fairly equally across the whole molecule. So when electronegativity and shape are considered, there's no real particular area that has a partial charge. These are what's called those polar covalent bonds having a delta energy of under 0.5. Okay, so I'll end my recording here and I'll open up the floor to questions if people have them. Uh, that is the end of lesson one, which is kind of like a nice little natural break uh, for us because in period two, we're going to look at lesson two and lesson three.